Thank you for choosing M Help Desk. I'm Drew, and I work on the M Help Desk technical support team. I'm going to show you the basics of M Help Desk to help you get your account set up. Let's get started. To log into M Help Desk, enter your email address. Then enter the default password from the welcome email. If you forget your password or you'd like to change it, simply click the Forgot Password link below. In the Forgot Password screen, enter your email address, then click Email Reset Instructions. Then follow the instructions you received to your inbox to choose your new password. Once you've got your email address and password in, click Sign In. To begin, let's enter some information about your company. To do this, click Settings in the main navigation bar, then click My Company. In the Company Info settings, you can adjust your company's name, address, phone number, and enter other information. Once you've got the information filled out, you can also upload a company logo. To do so, click in the company logo box, select the desired photo from your computer, and click Open. Once the logo has been loaded into the box, click on Next. In the following screen, you'll be able to adjust the size and cropping of your chosen photo. Once you've got it adjusted the way you like it, simply click on Save to save your logo. Now that we've got your company information and logo in the system, it's time to let them help us know what kind of products and services you provide to your customers. To start, click on Settings, then Lists, and select Price List. In here, you're able to create and adjust the products and services you're providing for your customers. To start, click Add Item. In this menu, you can set the type of the item you'd like to create, give it a name, and set the rate you're charging your customer. If you'd like to add more information about this item, simply click on Add More Item Details. In the following screen, you can add more details about the item you're creating. Since we selected product for the type of this item, we're able to say how many of this item we have on hand. While the system is able to track inventory quantities for a single location, give us a call if you'd like to track inventory for multiple locations, and we can help you out. Once you've entered all the information you'd like about your item, Simply click Save to create that item. Now that you've got some products and services in the system, it's time to add a staff member. To do so, simply click on People, then click Staff. Here in the Staff Management screen, you're able to establish and edit profiles for each of your staff members. To add a new staff member, click the blue Add button. In the next screen, you'll be able to set up a first name, last name, email address, as well as set a password for each of your staff members. The password can be changed at a later time. The next thing you'll want to do is set up a user role for that staff member. Admins have access to all areas of the system, can add and delete information in all areas of the system, and have access to all settings. Managers are able to access all areas of the system, but can't delete information and have limited access to settings. Staff only have access to the areas of the system to which you've granted them permission to access. In this case, let's go ahead and select Staff. Once you've got the user role selected, click on Save. To adjust what areas of the system your staff members are able to access, simply click the gear icon, then click Permissions. In here, you can set whether your staff members are able to access your entire customer list, whether they can view invoices and estimates, as well as make other adjustments. Once you've got the permissions set how you'd like them, click Save. Now that we've got your company information, products and services, and your staff in the system, let's go ahead and add a customer. To start, select People, then Customers from the main navigation bar. Then, click the blue Add Customer button. Similarly to adding a staff, you can populate your customer information here. You can go ahead and give them a name, set a default tax rate, as well as add other information. Once you've got all of the customer information filled out, click the Save button in the lower right. Here in the customer profile, you're able to add and adjust information relevant to that customer. You can also see any contacts, estimates, jobs, equipment, invoices, payments, or files that are relevant to that customer. Let's go ahead and start by adding an estimate. To do so, click the Estimates tab at the top of that customer's profile, then click Add Estimate. In the Estimate screen, you'll see the customer information along the top, information relevant to the estimate below that, and if you scroll down, you'll see the items table. To add the first item, simply click the blue Add Item button. In the Add Item pop-up, click in the Name field, then make the selection for the item you'd like to pick. 
You can also search for that item, typing the first few letters of its name. Before adding the item, you can adjust the quantity, description, rate, or tax code before adding the item. To finish adding the item to the estimate, click Save. Now that you've got the item added to the estimate, you can see information about the item in the table, along with an Approval button. If the Approved button is checked, that means the item will transfer to the job when the job is created. If the item is not checked, meaning unapproved, that item will not transfer to the job. If you scroll down a bit further, you'll see a Files section where you're able to upload different files and photos to that estimate. To upload a file or photo, click the blue Add button. Then, simply click in the File box, select the file you'd like to upload, and click Open. You'll then be able to preview and download that file from the estimate. Along the bottom of the estimate, you can also see where you can set the deposit. To set the deposit, click the Set Deposit button, then select how much deposit you would like to collect up front. You can set a flat amount or a percentage. Once you've got the amount or percentage set, click Save. Now that we've got a deposit set on this estimate, we can see that it's been marked as Deposit Due. Whenever we've collected the deposit, we can reflect that at M Help Desk by simply clicking the De Collect Deposit button, typing in the payment information, and clicking Save. And we can see that the deposit has been updated to paid. If you'd like for your customers to be able to pay their deposits and other payments through M Help Desk via credit card, you can head over to Settings, then click on Payments. In here, you're able to set up your payment processor. To sign up for M Help Desk Payments, simply enter your first name, last name, the email address that you'd like associated with your payment processing account, and view and agree to the terms of service. Once you click the Sign Up button, keep an eye out at that email address you entered for an email that will prompt you to finish your setup. You won't be able to collect payments until you finish setup. Now that our deposit has been collected, we'll go ahead and add the job. To do so, simply click the Add Job tab at the top of the estimate, then click Copy. On the job, we can see the customer information along the top. In the Job Details section, you're able to set a job type, job name, and create a description. And we can also see that the approved items from the estimate have transferred over. If we scroll down further into the Assign and Schedule section, we're able to create appointments on that job. To create an appointment, Click the Schedule button. When creating the appointment, you can set the subject, set the starting date and time, and say who the appointment is for. Whenever you've got the appointment set up just how you'd like it, click the Save button. Once the appointment's been created, we can see how this looks on the calendar. To do so, simply click on the Scheduling tab in the main navigation bar. Then you'll be able to see any appointments that have been created for your staff members. If you click on the Staff Selection button, you're able to adjust which color each staff member's appointments show up as. To do so, simply click the icon next to their name, click in the color menu, and select a new color for that staff member's appointments. One important feature of jobs other than appointments is job status. You're able to use statuses to track at what point of its life cycle a job is in. To adjust a job status, click on the current status, then click in the drop-down menu. Here you're able to tell whether a job has been scheduled, if it's open or in progress, or it's ready for billing. In this case, we'll say the job has been completed and we'll set it to ready for billing status. Now that we can see the job is in ready for billing status, we can add an invoice by clicking the Add Invoice tab at the top. If we scroll down, we can see the items that have been added to that invoice, as well as the subtotal and other information about that invoice. In order to collect payment on that invoice, simply click on the Payment tab at the top. Here we're able to see the deposit we collected earlier. To receive a new payment, click the Receive Payment button. Here you can enter relevant information for that payment, such as the check number, or if it was cash, change the payment method type. Additionally, if you are signed up for a payment processor, simply click the relevant card information and you'll be taken to the payment processor screen.
One other benefit of payment processing is that rather than you collecting payment on behalf of the customer, you can email the invoice to the customer and have them pay themselves. To email your invoice, simply click the email button at the top of the invoice. In here, you're able to set who's receiving the email, CC any relevant parties, set a subject, and attach anything you'd like. Once you've got the email just how you like it, click on send to send that email. Just as with a job, you can update the status of an invoice to reflect what part of the payment cycle it's in. Now that our invoice is completed, we can see that reflected in the customer's profile under the Invoices tab. One thing to note is that rather than creating estimates, jobs, and invoices from the customer profile, these can also be created using the Add button at the top of your profile. There you have it. Now that you've got the basics of how to set up your company profile and begin using M Help Desk, go ahead and give it a shot. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our customer support team. We're always happy to help. Until next time, take care and have an excellent day.